Good evening, and thank you for joining us for another Westwood Trust Creative Chat. My name is Claire Williamson, and I am the Director of Education and Community Engagement at Society for the Performing Arts. To describe myself and my surroundings, I am a white woman with dark brown hair and dark rimmed glasses. I'm wearing a gray sweater, some gold jewelry, and there are several framed pictures on the white wall behind me. I am thrilled to be chatting this evening with another awardee of the Houston Artist Commissioning Project, Felipe Lopez. SPA's Houston Artist Commissioning Project launched this summer as an opportunity to provide economic and creative support to Houston's artist community. The virtual phase of this project has been rolling out this fall, and we are also accepting applications from local working artists through December 18th for the live phase of the project. To learn more about the Houston Artist Commissioning Project and to apply, please visit our website. The link will be in the chat and is also shown on screen. Before we delve into this conversation, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the many Indigenous communities that have long used and continue to use this land as a living and gathering space. SPA's offices in Jones Hall are located on ancestral land traversed by the Karankawa, Atakapa Ishak, Sana, and Kualwitekan people. The Alabama Kushada people migrated to the Houston area over three centuries ago, and they played a large role in shaping the culture and economy of our region. We acknowledge these communities to offer recognition and respect for their lived experience and to broaden awareness of the forces that have led to this moment. On this last day of Native American Heritage Month, we are reflecting on our relationship to the land and to those who came before us. If you are interested in delving more deeply into this process, the U.S. Department of Arts and Culture has created a fantastic resource, the Honor Native Land Virtual Resource Pack, which we will be linking in the chat and you can also see on screen now. I hope you will join us in this journey towards truth and reconciliation. It's now my pleasure to introduce Felipe Lopez, SPA's Houston Artist Commissioning Project virtual grantee. Felipe Lopez is a multidimensional, self-taught visual artist based in Houston, Texas. Born in New York, Lopez's career began with mixed media drawings and paintings. He's exhibited work at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, Art Miami, Houston Fine Art Fair, the Texas Contemporary Art Fair, Sculpture Month Houston, and many notable galleries across the nation and the world. Felipe is also an artist facilitator for the Artist Inc. program through Fresh Arts. In 2019, he was awarded a Support for Artists and Creative Individuals grant through the Houston Arts Alliance, which helped to fund his largest bulb work. Felipe was also selected to be on the Citywide Committee for Disaster Relief with Houston Arts Alliance and the City of Houston. 2020 has brought opportunities, including a solo exhibition at the Deborah Colton Gallery entitled Precautionary Principles of the New World and Inclusion in the 21st Texas A&M Corpus Christi Oso Bay Biennial. Welcome, Felipe. Whoa, that's a lot. It is. <laughs> oh, man, I would have cut like just Felipe and then boom, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted I wanted our audience to have an idea about who who we were working with this evening because we're really excited to have you here. Cool beans. Thank you so much for having this inaugural thing and including me in it. I mean, man, I, if you guys like my crazy ideas, I'm I'm on a, I'm, on, I'm, I'm in a good direction. Well, we do. We love your crazy ideas for sure. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this conversation started. I have some questions prepared and if our virtual audience wants to chime in, and please do, um, you all can post a question in the live chat on either Facebook or on our YouTube and we'll do our best to talk about it. Cool. So uh, to start off, I want our audience to get to know your background a little bit better. I know you're originally from New York, how did you make it make your way to Houston and and what's your experience been like here? Uh, well, those was my parents. They moved. I had to come. It was illegal to leave me behind. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, my experience here was I, I got into art late. Um, and if you know me, you understand there was no HSPVA. It was finished with high school at 15, 14, 15, um, and then just stopped playing baseball and got into art immediately within a two month span when I was 16 and then just worked, you know, uh, worked conceptually, worked uh, um, on learning art history, worked in the aspect of just knowing my technical skill. I didn't, you know, and my mentor Diana Muniz was a huge part of me and who I am today and those types of things. Cause I mean, she said, you know, you gotta be strong in concept. And, you know, I really wanted uh, to show who I was as an artist or who I am as a person, but in an artistic manner. Like, what, what do I care about? What, what are the things that I'd be doing anyways had I not been making art kind of thing, so. Mm. You know, That's that, a really, really interesting way to think about it. I, I really like that. Yeah, I mean, so many artists get so in depth in their studio practice that they forget there's a world around them. Yeah, um, yeah. And you gotta interact with them, so. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it can't um, be all self-referential, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> As enjoyable as reading books for five straight days might be, you, you got to go outside, get, get some fresh air. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All about the fresh air for sure. Um, yeah. Other than uh, your mentor, Diana Muniz, that you mentioned, are there any other artists locally or globally who inspire you in the work that you do? Yeah. And um one and a couple of them have um, actually participated um, or shown interest in my work, which has kind of been nice. Uh, one of them has been Diane Burko. Uh, I've always kind of been a fan of her work since I installed her work a few years ago back at Cindy Lasica Gallery. Um, and wow. Diane's an environmental artist, so I, I'm very interested in doing large scale sculptures um you know with the mentality mm -hmm. of from the land for the land and with the land and uh i also like my technology so uh tony orsler was kind of another big artist recently that you know is in love with his uh um with the video work that i've done with the vr video work that i've done documenting his piece within lester marx collection and Lester Marx has been uh, another massive uh, mentor because I mean, he taught me, he taught me the things that you're not gonna learn in art school because he brought me into art business, you know. That is so important. Um, and that's one of those things where it's like, I, I do pay attention to my trajectory and the aspect of primary and secondary market. I'm conscious of the decisions I'm making today to better myself and what direction I want my art to go in. So um, you kind of have to think about that on top of, you know, the creative aspects. Absolutely. Uh, because there's a there's an art to business and that's honestly, if, yeah. <laughs> if you want to survive, that's kind of the best. You want to be very good at that art. You want to master that, you know. Um, yeah, as, as an independent artist, I, I understand that it is uh there's definitely a you have to be good at both what you do right. and also how you how you market it right absolutely we in the you mentioned reading books for five days straight one of our audience members is wondering um what are your desert island books Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh oh no you know i had an idea of my desert island books but then I ruined it with more books. Um, <laughs> That's always how it is, isn't it? You get, you, you've got like your three in mind and then all right. of a sudden. Right. Um, give me one second, because there's some here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Give me one second. Um, where, where? Ah, <laughs> this one, 
This one's a good one. This is one of my favorites, and it's all of them. It's not just this one particular one. I bought another one a couple of weeks ago, and this is why I say I messed up my Desert Island books with Calvin and Hobbes. Oh. So I love this. Mm -hmm. I love psychology. I love philosophy. And I prefer this over peanuts any day. Any day. You want to talk outside? Catch me outside about it. <laughs> the mouths. Love it. Love it. My aunt gave me one of these books years ago. Um, I was always, as a kid, and I was always envious that my cousin had the whole set. Wow. Um, and, and he still does. So I've slowly been <laughs> buying the set. Building up to it. Yeah. You know, I... I mean, I have to, I'm so used to going into Barnes and Nobles and just reading. Mm -hmm. uh, early on as an artist, that's one of those things that I did. Art News always published the top 200 collectors. I wanted to know who my next client was and I would cold call them. I'm pretty sure Stefan Simquit still remembers the day I cold called him. Um, <laughs> now I just pester him on Instagram. There you go. It's different. That's, yes. you know. It's evolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. That's a that's a great um, a great book for our audience to be thinking about as part of your inspiration too. I think you know. I, I love play. You mm -hmm. know, it's just one of those things where it's like, I want the art that I make to feel very depth, very in depth when it comes to the conceptual aspect. There's just so much, like it's just layers upon layers. Mm -hmm. Culturally, you could view this as something completely different. I like those things. I, I like, I feel like that shows strength in the art is that you can connect with many people. And in doing so, I want the creative process to feel like it's in play. Um, I'm Cuban. I was supposed to be playing baseball. I could hit a ball 420 feet. I could throw 90 miles an hour. Like that's oh. what Cubans are here to do other than boxing and making coffee and sandwiches and paella, you know, <laughs> but um, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, all I ever really did was play. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the way I played when it came to my education, um, I, I totally had to teach myself, but I've read more books since ditching school than I ever did in school. Um, most wouldn't advocate for that level of creative play, but as an artist, I mean, you kind of have to maintain, sustain, nourish, and evolve that. Yeah. And, that's something, that's why I was painting last week and doing video, VR videos this week. Um, yeah, I mean, it's true. I really like how you said what you're saying, maintain, sustain, nourish, all through play. I think right. that's, um, that's such Gotta a- Gotta evolve it, yep. Yeah, and evolve, exactly. All through, all through that avenue of play, absolutely. Um, I would love to talk about this collaboration that you're mm -hmm. working on for the commissioning project. So you are a visual artist and right. you are collaborating with two wonderful local performing artists, Megan Hendley or Chapel in the Sky mm -hmm. and Outspoken Bean. So what is that collaboration like for you? Um, well, I mean, it has my wife in it, so she's beautiful yes. and brilliant. So <laughs> I'm sure she's listening in the car with all of our children while I do this. Um, <laughs> Wonderful. It, it's, it's amazing, you know, and I met Bean um, back when we flew out to Kansas City with Fresh Arts for the Artist uh, Inc. Mm -hmm. um, that was an awesome experience. Um, yeah. And to be doing that while working for Lester, that's when the business aspect fully came in and I was just kind of like this. You know, um, but Bean always captivated me. Every time he presented, I was like, man, there's there's something about this guy. Like, I like the words he's saying. He's reaching me on that level. His delivery is very, is very, um, is so hip hop. It's so hip hop. Yeah, I love is. that. Mm -hmm. I love that. It spoke to me because I love hip hop. 
like yeah. real hip hop. Um, and then a few years later, my wife is, we've been doing music since the beginning of our relationship. When we got together, she was directing uh, a gallery, uh, being the assistant director at a gallery that I was represented by. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then I was like, well, I went to school for audio engineering and sound design and I built all these synthesizers on the computer and I have no idea what to do with them. You're in a bunch of bands. Would you like to use <laughs> my synthesizers? I don't know how to play music. And she's just like, oh my God, you have so much to creatively play with. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and now here we are with four kids eight years later. Um, <laughs> but then it, it was just like, I want to do something with Bean. And she's always been talking about collaborating with somebody. Mm -hmm. And she checked out the artists that were in the uh, Artist Inc. program. And that's when she saw some of Bean's old videos um, and his TED Talk performance and stuff like that. Right. And I don't know. I mean, Bean and I did this collaboration a year ago, year and a half ago, and it just kind of worked. Megan saw the video and was like, I can make music to that. Um, and then, yeah, I was like, let's <laughs> let's do this. Megan yeah. and Bean had done another performance last year at Sculpture Month, and Bean did phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It was so good that I was like, whatever this is, we have to do more of it. Um, and yeah, now we're doing these videos uh, for SPA. We're doing these videos for um, uh, HAA with mm -hmm. making other grant. Um, and hopefully we'll be doing these videos for the next uh, program you guys have coming up. So we're totally applying with this. So buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just the beginning. That's really that I yeah. I love how these collaborations form over years. You know, you right. meet someone and you want to work with them, but you mm -hmm. kind of have to wait for the right opportunity to arise, and right. um, it just sort of grows from there. Absolutely. I, how do you I know when Bean finished the video. Huh? No, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was saying I know when the night I know that we recorded it. It wasn't this Saturday. It was a Saturday prior, mm -hmm. and because I had the whole set in my head, I knew what we were doing. You know, um, Megan and Bean had been working on the music he had recorded in my house the night prior, so we literally finished the track in 24 hours from mixing and mastering his vocals and processing all of that for mm -hmm. him to hear it to then prepare for the live performance. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, I mean, but we each know our artistry so well that things like that are easy because everybody knows where we fall in line. And we've wow. got this really great dynamic going to where it, it's it feels, it maintains that creative level of play. Bean, when he was here, recorded <laughs> recorded the poetry in two minutes. Wow. Just nailed it. While we're vi doing the video, he's such a great performer and like mm -hmm. major props, bro. Seriously, Absolutely. Snap, major props. He nailed it in three takes. The video, he just like felt it and he just got it. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and we had prepped for you know last few weeks getting this ready while we were looking for a space. Um, but I talked to Bean about the idea. And wanting to focus on the environmentalism, I'm very interested in the aspect of uh, BIPOC artists. That's the acronym. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm colored. Uh, the environment matters to you too. Um, yeah, African art is super popular right now in the visual art world, which is awesome because they're phenomenal artists. Uh, you know, and it's just one of those things where it's like. I wanted, you know, um, the globe and the climate and all these things to all be central and showing it that it matters to minorities equally because minorities, as a minority, we totally have to up our game. Like recycling is just not good enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there that are doing a great job and being more environmental. Trust me, I have four kids. I know it's hard. Yeah. You know, it is mm -hmm. hard. You have to make conscious decisions. And um, 
you know, it's just one of those things that I wanted to focus on that. So when I'm talking to Bean about the idea, and this is coming off my solo, um, which if you saw the sculptures hanging in the room, it is mm -hmm. you know, uh, very much an environmentally based uh, exhibition. Yeah. Um, and focusing on that. Um, and I wanted him to talk about the environment in such a way that he brought in history, he brought in culture, yeah. he brought in he brought in so much that it really felt like it was a unifying thing that we created, uh, which honestly spoke to our workflow mm -hmm. um, because we just, I mean, it was smooth. It was, you know, it was butter. Yeah. <laughs> part of it, like you said, is, um, it seems to me like part of it is that prep work that goes into it. Like you said, you had talked through this concept and worked out the ideas and were really, you know, had really refined your process before the actual performance. Right. And that's what helped make it so smooth. And that's professionalism, right? Right, right. This is why I was a little stickler on the video because <laughs> I want people to experience this. Bean is, and know this, Bean and Chapel in the Sky, or my wife, Megan Henley, they are literally performing for you, the viewer. You can move your screen completely around and 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 feel like you're sitting in a chair, being ha having this artistic individual performance for you, the viewer. You can see all the plants lined, uh, circled around Bean, mm -hmm. who is essentially like the professor, yet he's the one learning from the students. You know. Um, yeah. And and this this is one of those individual artistic experiences. It's not just watching a video. It's being a part of the art, mm -hmm. being a part of this this magical moment that we put together. Um, and, uh, and that's important. That was something that I was, as an artist, I was like, I knew I want to do this because this has to change the way we continue to practice um, our art. Absolutely. That is so, um, that's just such a beautiful sentiment that this is a, that this is a, a moment that you're sharing with all of us um, and that you'll, we will be able to be in that space with you. That's, um, I really love that idea. Um, you mentioned the 360 concept. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about that for our audience? We want to make sure that everyone is, uh, mm -hmm understands the concept and knows exactly what to do going into watching the video. Right. Well, first and foremost, if you have the technology to um, have the video to process in full 4K, it will take a little bit. It will take a few start and stops and restarts. And I know this because I, I tried it on an iPhone 11 Pro Max. So not old technology, but I got it in February mm -hmm. and Apple won't let me upgrade for free. <laughs> Um, so, but you want to let it load. You can use your finger to swipe and scroll the screen. You can go all the way up, see the ceiling all the way down to see the legs of the tripod, uh, the plants, the projectors. Bean is moving around you, or you can follow Bean as he moves around the space um, with your finger or physically having the VR goggles, sliding it in, uh, your phone in or whatever. Um, and in the YouTube settings, you can select how you want to view it. Uh, if you have the VR goggles to slide your phone in, you can select that option. It is formatted for that. Um, if for the rest of us that just want to view this on the computer, on the mobile, the computer, you use the mouse to move the little arrow keys at the top left of YouTube, and you'll see everywhere. You will feel like you're sitting there. Um, on a larger screen, you could project this on your television or on the wall and really feel like you're a part of, a part of this performance. Um, if you're on the mobile, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You can physically move or you could just swipe and move the screen um, and you'll feel like you're there. You can see a, a snippet into this world that we've created for you. It's in, it really is incredible, and yeah, I think I love the idea of uh, projecting it on a TV. I'm gonna have to do that on Thursday because um, 
it is just, it is such a, it, it, it has the potential to be such an immersive experience. And I think having it as big as possible mm -hmm. um, will really amplify that. We have a question from the audience. I think this is a great one. How common is this 360 VR film approach? Do you know other artists that are working with this right now? Um, honestly, I, I don't. And I'm saying that as somebody who um, in the last couple of weeks has been talking to Tony Orsler and paying attention to what one of the best known video artists um, oh. is, is doing. And that's the part that he liked the most. Wow. You know, and that's kind of one of those, it's, it's beautiful. You know, you feel like you're a part of it. You feel like you're in this unique space. Um, I, don't, I, I know there's a lot going on with like Fortnite and games, um, right. pushing those boundaries, especially since Fortnite offers, you know, uh, concerts with inside. That's been the popular thing. Uh, I'm a Fortnite player at Felipe Lopez art also <laughs> tambien. Okay. Um, <laughs> but visual artists aren't really going in that realm. When you talk about uh, post computer art or even digital art, you just see a bunch of old ass televisions. Oh, it's got, sorry. Old okay. TVs in a space playing some terrible video. And okay. to the point where it's like, you didn't make, better technology and you didn't really make great art. So here we are um, <laughs> dealing with this mess. But seriously, um, it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know anybody doing this. Right. I would love to know many other people doing this. I would love to collaborate with other people to bring this type of experience to, uh, to their viewership. Mm -hmm. um, this is an art that really needs to just like, push the boundaries of how we do performances. And this is all performances because this gives power back to musicians to where their following can even um, ha be a part of the concerts that realistically that they could do from their house. Absolutely. That's the yeah. reality. That's what we can accomplish with this is, is, I mean, look at musicians as a whole. You can record an album in your living room. 40 years it's ago, really you had to book a studio. Yeah, it really increases that access um, component for both both on the side of uh, like from the consumer, the audience perspective, right. but then also from the artist perspective at being able to reach a much wider audience. Yeah, absolutely. And you and I were talking earlier about how just with everything that has happened during 2020 with the pandemic, especially um, that performing art and art is shifting because of these new constraints and this digital world is really it's free game yeah it's honestly open it's so open um you know in one of our last conversations i was talking about twitch mm -hmm. because this is kind of one of those things where it's like you could do this on twitch you could do this on youtube right. i can do live vr performances connected to youtube mm -hmm. you know um from the comfort of my home. And in the grand scale of making art, the expense isn't very much. Right. Like it's just not, you're buying technology and you know that you're buying a tool, mm -hmm. which is a major asset to what you're trying to do. Um, I, think, I think the arts has to evolve, especially in the performance area, especially. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Well, I have one more question for you uh, before okay. we wrap things up, but I, I'm sure our audience would love to know, um, and I would too, what is next for you? Do you have any upcoming projects? I know that you have been working on some more of these VR videos. Right. Anything you want to plug? Um, wrapping up Meg's grant with Houston Arts Alliance and doing her visual album, um, so she was going to do more performances this year at Sculpture Month Houston that got pushed back to, I believe, March 2021. Right. I mean, at this point, maybe further, who knows? Um, mm -hmm. But so she realized 
I had to do something different and she wanted to do this this visual album. So, yeah. I mean, we're we're doing that. Uh, I've got a couple other projects um, that I'm working on and then I'm finishing up a, a series of paintings. So uh, finishing up uh, about 25 uh, oil paintings. Um, Beautiful. All of my plants. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah, all my beautiful little house plants that are in the same video that Bean <laughs> Bean is performing to plants. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that is. That's awesome, and it, it ties into that sort of environmental theme, and also this everyone being stuck at home and driving yeah. inspiration from what's around us. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Felipe. Um, Thank you also to everyone who, for joining us virtually, for engaging with us during this conversation, and also, of course, a huge thank you to our program sponsor, Westwood Trust. Uh, before we sign off, I would like to encourage everyone to learn more about and to support the amazing work Felipe has going on beyond his work with SPA. Um, I'm gonna pop his website up here in the chat, and we'll also share your Facebook page as well. Um, so folks can find you. Um, thank you again so much, Felipe, for sharing your time with me this evening and for allowing our audience to get to know you better. Sweet. Thank you so much. Society for the Performing Arts is a nonprofit organization. If you enjoyed this conversation, please consider learning more about what we do at SPA and supporting our work and the work of our amazing Houston Artist Commissioning Project artists. Our website is linked in the chat and is also shown here on screen. And finally, please save the date for Felipe's Houston Artist Commissioning Project premiere, which you can find on Facebook, on YouTube Live, and on SPA's website. And it will be this Thursday, December 3rd at 7 p.m. See you then. Thanks. <laughs>